Hatchery designs are highly flexible and are tailored to the requirements of site, species produced, geographic location, funding and personal preferences. Many hatchery facilities are small and occupied to larger ongoing operations while others produce solely for sale. Very small scale hatcheries are often utilized in subsistence farming to supply families or communities. A fish hatchery is a place for artificial breeding, hatching and rearing through the early life stages of fish. In Kenya, there are counted number of fish hatcheries owned by government and parastatals. Pony Fish Hatchery, located in Topa, Kilifi County, is one of the famously known fish hatcheries in the region owned by Paul Murage. He started the hatchery in 2013 out of passion and the love of fish breeding. In this hatchery, they rear fish breeds such as catfish, tilapia, and ornamental fish fingerlings for fish farmers in the coastal region. He tells of his journey since he established the hatchery as a business. It's, it's a journey that started on it was the 2013, the year 2013, and uh, it came out of passion because uh, my mom used to buy for us aquariums, so that's where we started. And now it's become now like a family business because everybody is chipping in, my parents, my sisters, and everybody else. So this is Pony Fish Farm. We rear fish. We got it's a hatchery, eh? so we have tilapia, we have catfish, and we have also a bit of an ornamental, which is still on the initial stages. Ornamental. We are trying it with the climate, the coastal climate. Paul started the hatchery as a hobby, which he later converted into the business after aquaculture peaked in Kilifi County. The motivation came as a part of, first it started like a small farming in a small tank. Then we saw that uh, fish were able to survive. So we tried it out, we gave them food. It was ups and downs, eh? the times it would work, some it would not work. Then through a lot of trainings that we did, is when we realized it can also be like a business. Yeah? So it started first as a hobby, yeah? then now it's a business. But hatchery has its own ups and downs because there are challenges. Eh? You really need the farmers and your customers. So for us, it's not we don't have a market of ourselves. We rely solemnly on the county and the farmers. Paul tells on why he chose to do a fish breeding as opposed to fish farming, which is common among farmers. Hatchery, it's an art of a kind because it's not a lot of education. It was for us because we were in research also, myself, so I got into it and uh, we learned skills of how to hatch these fish, especially the catfish also, which now we are really capitalizing on that. In his backyard, Paul has set up 29 fingerling pools with different fish breeds. The small ponds that we have, which we call them raceways, they are about uh, 25, all of them. Then we have the big hatcheries. This one's for tilapia, which are concrete tanks. We have about four. So these are our main tanks. This is where we get our fingerlings from. For a sustainable venture, he has selected a parent stock for breeding. We got parent stock, eh? which are the big fish that we initially invested in. We didn't just pick fish from anywhere. So we invested in the parent fish. So those are the ones which are giving us these small fingerlings. Through that, we're able to get different fish from everywhere within Kenya. So we're able to cross them, and maybe we get a super breed out of it. Monosex is a male-only fish, which is now the in thing, because people want to keep fish that will grow bigger. And the males are the ones which grow big in size. The females are small. So people, everybody's trying to get more males than females. So that's why it's called the monosex. But until to date, I think, I don't think people have gotten 99 or 100%, but at least we are almost there. Before placing the parent fish together for spawning, they should be conditioned. Conditioning is feeding the fish a variety of healthy foods to get them in top condition for spawning. Many fish species can be conditioned using a well-balanced feed. 
This way, when the fish are introduced, they are eager to spawn. Fingerlings are very delicate stages in the growth of fish. They need to be well maintained and fed with correct feeds and amounts within its required timeline for proper growth. Feeds are the greatest challenge in aquaculture farming due to their high cost and availability. Paul is lucky to have networks abroad where he imports his fish feeds. It is a challenge. So for us, we are depending on the imported feeds. Huh? We have the Atemia that is also gotten locally, but we have uh, the imported uh, small high protein feeds that we, we normally buy from outside. Using high quality feeds has a direct impact on the food conversion ratio. Paul feeds his tilapia 10 times in a day, but he insists that it is not more about feeding, but the frequency to obtain all the proteins and nutrients to make the fish grow at a maximum speed throughout the day. Like for the fries, we feed them like every two hours. So for that, there's challenges because you need more manpower and it's also a bit tedious and also careful. Everybody has to be very careful because at that stage, when they're still egg to fry, they're very, very delicate. You can lose big, big number of stock uh, through either disease or mismanagement of the water or something like that. Hatcheries require a lot of attention and manpower, especially when handling fingerlings. Paul's main challenge is the whole climate in the coastal region which leads to the loss of fingerlings as the water temperature in the ponds need to be manually controlled. Mombasa is hot, so with this heat also it affects the water temperatures to get them to cool, so every time you need to run water. So those are the kind of challenges. So the feeds also get bad very fast, so you always need fresh feeds. It's labor intensive, you need a lot of people because uh, f like for us we are really now capitalizing on catfish. That means that you need to grade, you need to feed, you need to do a lot of stuff. When rearing fingerlings, the water in the ponds need to run constantly. This is because the fish need fresh and clean water to survive. Uh, for the small raceways, as I was saying, the water has to run so that you're able to give enough oxygen to the hatcheries and the fish depend on the oxygen to survive so the water has to be very well oxygenated throughout. In the coastal region, the water is salty, which poses a challenge to his farm. To overcome this, Paul has drilled a borehole for constant supply of fresh water. So we depend on the borehole. The borehole water, which is a, it's not very salty, but uh, it works well. Because these fish have they've climatized to these kind of waters, so even them breeding, the small ones and the others, they are used to these waters. And that the same water is the one which is used in different farmers. Paul has many other ponds to which he breeds the fingerlings according to their ages. You can keep the big fish with the small, so we put them in sizes. And as we are hatching, we got, that's why we've labeled our tanks. Eh? We got like B8, we know B8, when we're, hatch, we're getting fingerlings from here, they're going to maybe H something, which is a holding tank something. There's holding tank 21, 20, 19. So it goes to that one. So we are able to monitor the sizes. Then we start them on the feed immediately. Fingerlings are as tiny as one inch and therefore very delicate when it comes to harvesting for sale. Our tanks, are, we've constructed them in a way we're able to harvest with the nets. If it's not the nets, we get them from the eggs. So when we're harvesting the the eggs, we take the females, we count the number of days, then we pick the female ones, which are fertilized eggs in the mouth, we strip the eggs out, we remove the eggs from the mouth, then we put them now in the holding tanks, then they hatch. Or we can even get the fries, when because the female put the fries in the mouth, so we can harvest them directly from the mouth. Also. Fish farming in Kilifi is quickly gaining a momentum which in turn creates opportunity for Paul and other farmers. We had kept the parent fish isolated for some time. So until the orders started coming in, is when now we are able to put them together and start producing. So we, it's actually very hard to say that every month you're able. 
not unless when there's market now you can be able to say when you put the females and males together you can say i can produce maybe 20000 or 30000 a month or something like that fingerling prices vary with the age and size Paul sells the tilapia and catfish fingerlings at 10 shillings to 15 shillings each. Prices depend on also the age and the size. So it can range from 10, 15 or so, uh, depending on the size. Doing a business with no promise of market is a risk that agripreneurs take in the agribusiness sector. Yeah, the market was down, but now it's coming up. So we hope for the best. We hope that farmers will come up and they'll, they'll get encouraged to keep fish because we have the waters. Yeah. So I think everything would be possible if we really encourage more farmers and more farmers to join. Paul advises that fish business is viable provided you do an extensive research on their market and how to breed them before investing. Before venturing into any business, they should really research on it first and also do a lot of trainings. Like I think in Kilifi we have very capable officers who can be able to train them and take you through the whole process so that once somebody is able to go through it, we'll either take it or leave it or be passionate about it and take it as a business. So if you take like hatchery, you just know you're dealing with babies the fries, yeah. But if you want to be a fish farmer, you have to have space so that you can put big ponds for you to get big fish. For fish farming, you can come as a group and put big fish. But for hatchery, it needs either an individual or a family who's staying at one place so that they're able to help in checking. Like for me, we work with uh, my mom and my dad is also here. So with their support, if I'm not there, they're always there. So, and they really are they're a big help to the farm. We will be taking a short commercial break. And when we come back, Paul will give us a tour on his hatchery and also visit a farm which has brought fingerlings from Pwani fish hatcheries. 